Welcome, in this video we're going to be talking about virtual learning environments, also known as VLEs. About 10 years ago when I was at my first ever school, back in 2004, um, I was told that every school in two years time will have a virtual learning environment, and I wasn't quite sure what one was. But we were told that what these virtual learning environments should do is they should break down the walls between school and home. So this is school and this is home. And obviously there were walls between these, so students would come to school, they'd leave and they would go home. And they'd be completely different places. So what a virtual learning environment was supposed to do is break down this wall and make it so that students could access any content that they were able to access at school, they should be able to access at home as well. So a virtual learning environment would sit in the middle here. So fundamentally what it is, it's a piece of software that, uh, or a software system that uses the internet to support teaching and learning in the school. It doesn't have to be a school, it can be a college or another educational institution. But again, it uses the internet and it's a piece of software. Now there are many of them out there, so I've just got a few on here for you to see. So um, the first one that we were ever introduced to back at the school 10 years ago was Moodle. Uh, a community-driven, globally supported uh, virtual learning environment. Uh, Moodle is uh, freeware, which basically means that you can implement this yourself. Um, obviously, you'd, it does tend to be um, quite complex to set up. I remember when I set it up 10 years ago, it was very difficult to install, and you had to have good IT skills in, able to, in, in order to do it. Nowadays, I assume it's a little bit easier, but still, you'd probably need some IT skills to set up this virtual learning environment. But this is a free version. Um, the next school that I went to were trying to implement Fronter, which again is a virtual learning environment, but this is a paid virtual learning environment. So you pay quite a bit of money to actually set this up, um, have it hosted off-site. You could have it hosted on-site as well. What that means is that you could have it hosted in your school, or you could actually have it host hosted externally or on a server somewhere else around the world. Um, and then a very popular one, is Frog. Frog is a virtual learning environment. Again, um, it, it's a paid one. It's a very expensive one. Um, but there are, I think, 12 million uh, students use Frog across the world. And so going back to um, virtual learning environments, what, what actually are they? So we know that they break down the walls, but, but, what, does, but what do they provide us with? What does a virtual learning environment provide us with. And when we talk about us, we could talk about the teachers, and we could talk about the students, and potentially we could even talk about the parents. Because it can divide each of these entities, uh, sorry, it can provide each of these entities with different content that usually you would only be able to access at a school. So let's discuss some of the things that you can actually um, Oh, the features of a VLE, so the features of a VLE. So, first of all, it allows students' uh, performance to be assessed using tests that are automatically um, assessed. So you can set tests on these virtual learning environments that are automatically, automatically uh, marked. Now I talked about this uh, a little bit in my previous video when I was talking about um, online tutorials. Now you think about the benefits to the students of having automatically marked tests. It's instant feedback. So you've got instant feedback for the students. You think about the benefits here to the teacher. Freeze up teacher time. If the, if the tests are automatically marked. Again, you could argue that, that the teacher has to spend time to actually create the tests, but it does actually free up teacher time. And then if you talk about parents, well, they can access this, their children's grades online. They can actually log in and see how their children are doing. So we've got tests that are marked automatically. What other features have we got of a VLE? We've also got, it allows teachers to um, upload content. So as a teacher, I 
can upload um, resources for my students. I can upload homework for my students. I can upload videos for my students. So I can upload a, a variety of multimedia for my students to then access. So again, the benefits to the student are that they can access content away from the school walls. So they can access content away from school. And I say that because I didn't say they can access content at home. They might be traveling on a bus, they might be traveling on a plane, and they can access this content by, as long as they've got internet access, which some airplanes now do allow you to have, have uh, you can actually access this content anywhere away from school because it's, it's all online. It also, having a VLE, obviously improves communication. So normally, when you used to go to school, you'd come in at around 8 a.m., and you'd leave at about 3.30. And that tends to be the only time that you'd get to see your teachers. Nowadays, with virtual learning environments, we're actually a 24-7 access. And you could say, well, that's fantastic. Well, that's, that's a great thing for students to be able to access their teachers at any point or any time. But you could also argue, well, that's a negative for the teachers because, you know, where's the work-life balance? If I'm accessible 24-7, then how do I escape from work and actually have a life as well? So communication is improved through the use of virtual learning environments, but there are advantages and disadvantages to both parties as well. Again, parents could also contact us, which I'm sure they would like as well, but that necessarily isn't always good for the teacher. So we talked about homework. So another feature of a VLE is that we talked about homework. We talked about the setting of homework. But the other good thing about a virtual learning environment is that not only can we set the homework, but we can submit the homework, or students can submit the homework, and the teacher can mark the homework um, online as well. So that way, if the teacher is marking the home homework online, then assessment is also done online. So homework could all be distributed online, and that could be linked in nicely with a, a calendar. So it could be linked in with a calendar so that students can actually see, here's your homework, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and these are the homework days, first, second, third. And you can see that on the third, you have, or on the second, you have some homework. So it allows the students, hopefully, to become uh, much more organized in managing their homework and submitting their homework. Virtual learning environments also encourage peer assessment. Because of the communication methods that are available and the fact that they're able to share and collaborate and communicate with each other, it allows uh, a platform or it provides a, pr a platform for students to do peer assessment. So that means students helping each other, marking each other's work, giving each other feedback and cutting out the actual content from the teacher. So, you know, students can learn from each other. Is the teacher needed? Well, hopefully the teacher's got expert opinion and expert advice and expert uh, knowledge on subjects. But peer assessment is very useful, not only for the teacher, but also for the students to learn from each other. Teachers can set up blogs on a virtual learning environment. So if you're not sure what a blog is, a blog is a web blog. Hence the, fur, hence the word blog, if I take out that lot, blog. It's a weblog. It's basically where um, you can create a mini site and it's like a diary of sorts where you can post stories. Uh, you can ask us comments from your students. You can put pictures on there. Students could comment on those pictures. They can comment on the stories. Uh, and again, it's providing uh, access to content and discussion outside of the classroom walls. Now, I've mentioned throughout that there's some advantages and disadvantages of a VLE. Now let's just break them down. So a VLE, we have um, advantages and we have disadvantages. So let's have a look at some of the advantages. First of all, students can access a VLE 24-7 from anywhere with internet access. A disadvantage 
you could say, well, the disadvantage is that actually the software, I talked about Fronter, the software is expensive. Another advantage would be, we've talked about online assessments and how students can access them to assess themselves and find out where they're at. So the fact that they can do this at any point, students can actually assess themselves at any point, um, is, is, is a great advantage to the students. Another disadvantage we could talk about, with all this personal data available of students on these virtual learning environments, such as account details, such as personal details, such as their work, then we are actually opening ourselves up and students are opening themselves up to potential hackers. Um, another advantage would be that the learning can actually be more individualized on here because the student is um, learning at their own pace, they can access the content they want when they want it, they're not waiting for the rest of the class to catch up or speed ahead or waiting for the teacher to catch up to their speed they can actually work at their own pace. So it's a very individualized and personalized learning. Another disadvantage would be step training. I remember when I was learning about Moodle, it's very difficult to grasp the basic concepts of how to use Moodle itself. And so, you know, training is um, something that's essential. Sometimes that could be expensive. Sometimes it could take teachers away from what they're doing, which is their teaching. Um, and another thing as well is that we talk about time taking the teacher away from their teaching. It could also take up time to, to add content. So the disadvantage to a teacher could be time to add the content. Although it might save time in the long run, such as getting these tests sorted so that they're automatically marked, initial time spent setting it up, populating it with content, can actually be a disadvantage. So, we've talked about virtual learning environments, we've talked about the features that they offer and the advantages and disadvantages of them.